The simple bond line Lewis structures are really useful for showing which atoms are bonded to which. And as we pointed out, um, that's really great because you can spot functional groups easily. But there's one aspect of those structures that uh, is a serious flaw. Let me, let me draw what we drew before and then we'll talk about uh, what needs to be better. We had a structure like this. What this doesn't show is the actual three-dimensional structure, the spatial arrangement of these atoms. And the spatial arrangement is just super important. It is absolutely as important as the fact that you're not totally flat is important. There are three dimensions of these structures, and when two molecules interact, whether they're two molecules of the same structure or the different structures, the spatial orientation of those atoms is extremely important, and that turns out to be the critical aspect of organic structures that lets biological chemistry be so specific. So biological chemistry relies extremely heavily on the fact that there's three dimensions to these structures and we need to be able to show those spatial relationships easily. This does not mean we have to abandon this really simple bond line structure way of drawing structures. But we do need to modify it to recognize that carbon atoms have, are, are tetrahedral when they have four things attached to them. So, for example, for an atom right here, and you can see two things bonded to it, but there are two more things bonded to it. And if we draw those two things, these are hydrogens, like this, this is going to be totally fraudulent. There is no way that all four of those bonds are in the same plane. Quite the contrary. Three of these atoms, the carbon and two others, can be in the same plane, are in the same plane. The other two are not. So we need to draw these things in a bit different way. There's a convention that acknowledges that when we have three atoms in a plane, this atom, the carbon, and this other carbon, that the two other things that are attached to carbon, in this case they're hydrogens, stick down, but one points away from us and the other points toward us. So we are going to use the wedge to indicate that something is sticking toward us, and we are going to use the dash to indicate something is sticking away. So this hydrogen on a dash is sticking away from us. And this hydrogen on a wedge is sticking toward us. And now we have a true tetrahedral arrangement of the four atoms attached to this carbon. Here's a carbon, here's a carbon, here are these two hydrogens, and they're arranged in a tetrahedral way. This bond line convention, an approach to drawing structures, is modified when we need to, to show that the uh, things attached to these carbons are either sticking toward us or away from us if the other atoms are in the plane. Let's look at this one. Again, this this carbon atom, this carbon atom has two other carbons in the plane with it, and then two other things attached to it sticking down. One of them is bromine, and the other, we don't show it because it's assumed to be hydrogen. The other is hydrogen. We need to show the spatial orientation of those guys. So rather than draw that line there, we'll take that line away. A wedge, depending on whether we mean the bromine is away from us or toward us. So let's say it's away from us. 
we're going to put that on a dash. And that means the hydrogen is toward us. So we would put that. And as soon as we write the wedge in, then it's mandatory that we write the hydrogen in. Because otherwise, that structure or convention would mean that that wedge is a methyl group. Now we've got another carbon. It's got an NH2, but that NH2 has spatial orientation. So we need to define what that is. We'll break that bond. I think we'll see if we can move that NH2 over. We'll put this on a wedge or a dash, depending on whether it's, we mean it's toward us or away from us. Let's say it's toward us. There's our wedge. And the dash will have an H. It's understood. But as soon as we draw the dash, again, just like when we draw the wedge, we have to put something at the end of it. So we'll show the hydrogen. Now take a look at this next carbon. This again will have two hydrogens attached to it. One will be down and away, and one and the other one will be down and toward us. And we will write them like this if we want to show their spatial orientation. Notice that I haven't done anything with this carbon that's a CH3. And typically we don't. We could. And if we showed that hydrogen in the plane, then these other two would be up and away and up and toward us. Now, do you notice a pattern here? That when we've got a line down and back up again, this is, there's a carbon at this break. And when the break is pointing down, the two other things that we're showing both point down. And when that break is pointing up, what's attached to this carbon is pointing up. And again, when that break is pointing down, these guys are both pointing down. And when this break is pointing up, both these guys are pointing down. And when this break is pointing down, both these guys are pointing down. So the direction that the break points, down or up, defines whether the other substituents attached to carbon are pointing down or up. Now, for reasons that you'll understand after we talk more about the spatial aspects of organic molecules, there is no need to indicate the exact spatial orientation when carbon has two hydrogens attached to it, or the same two things of anything for that matter, but these are hydrogens. So we only have to show the wedges and the dashes when There are two different things on these carbons. So for spatial representation using the bond line convention, this is it. <clears throat> this is a CH3, and we don't have to sp show spatial orientation. This is a CH2, and we don't have to spend so show spatial orientation. This is a CH2, no spatial orientation needs to be represented. But when we have two different things on these carbons, then we'll have to point out what the orientation is in each case. Now take a look. This also works for ring structures. And let's write a five-membered ring that has an OH group and a CH3. Notice that at this carbon, there's a carbon there. 
we show three bonds in the same plane. We know that can't happen. And that this carbon, there it is. We show three bonds in the same plane. We know that can't happen. Because this carbon also has a hydrogen attached. It's got four things attached to it. It has to be a tetrahedral arrangement. So we will draw those differently. When we have rings, we will typically draw those rings like all the atoms of the ring are in the plane of the screen or paper. And that means the other two on each of these carbons all the way around the ring will be sticking toward us or away from us. I'm just giving you an example. We could have written other orientations here or here. And notice once again, the CH2, we don't have to show spatial orientation. Just like we didn't here, here, or here. But when there are two different things attached to these carbons, OH and H, CH3 and H, then we need to show the spatial orientation and we'll use the wedge or the dash. So the bond line convention for drawing structures can be easily modified using wedges and dashes. Somehow this doesn't look much like a wedge. Is a convention that works well for sp showing spatial orientations of atoms specifically in molecules and we will use that repeatedly because the spatial orientations often will be very important.